And here we are. I'm Chris Letham. It's another beautiful day here in Honolulu. It's Wednesday. And uh, today we have a, a special guest. He is a candidate who's running for mayor. Um, it's political season. And of course, I'd like to welcome you to the show, Ernest Cavario. Thank you for coming here to uh, so Think much. Tech and uh, being on The Economy and You. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I, running for mayor is a big deal. To some, not to me. That to you? No. Yeah? No, is, this the first time, is this the first time you've ran for office? Yes. Yes? So how's it going? So, um, it's, going it's going all right. I'm using a lot of social uh, media mm -hmm. to get my name out there. And I'm just meeting and greeting a lot of people, going to shopping centers, talking to people, going to the parks, yes. talking to people, letting them know how I f feel about issues and finding out how they feel about issues and everything else. I don't have that so-called money to back me up that the other politicians have. Okay, so well, you're on, you're, you're, we're going to give you a little a little time here um, on uh, in in the world of TV media. So tell us uh, a little bit. What, what why did you decide to run for mayor? Why why is this uh, something that you decided was important in your life? Well, I took a lot of time to think about this, and I mm -hmm. felt that Honolulu needed a change. I felt that it was going in the wrong direction. I felt that it, that there was too much corruption in my in, in my eyes mm -hmm. going on. Everybody was taking care of the corporations and big business and no one was taking care of the people, the people that counted, the people that live out there that are voting. Yeah? Mm -hmm. No one was taking care of them. They forgot about them. So in the interim, by forgetting about the people, Honolulu built a new crisis which leads to the homelessness. Yes. Honolulu builds a new crisis where the native people are not getting anything. I mean, they're being left out of the conversation Totally. I mean, interesting. you think about them, um, the native people of Hawaii, right? Mm -hmm. They have homesteads, but only 3% of the land is given to them for homestead. Mm -hmm. How do you fit that many people on 3% of the land of Hawaii? Yeah. And why only 3%? And how much of the land that actually in Hawaii has actually been developed? I mean, uh, we have a lot of land that's still left from the pineapple and sugarcane days. Right. That's sort of still left out there. And, and are we still even growing uh, pineapple in the, on this island? Is there... Well, there are pineapples that are still being growing and all that, but um, uh -huh. what's happening and what I see is a land grab, a land grab by both the state and the city. So it seems that they're buying an acre at a time, and as they buy an acre at a time, they're converting valuable <coughs> agricultural <coughs> land mm -hmm. into hotels or um, condominiums that people just cannot afford. Mm -hmm. I mean, how does an average person in Hawaii afford to live in Hawaii. Without it's getting building tougher, affordable. isn't it? It's getting yeah, a little without tougher. Building yeah. affordable housing. And the question I would ask is, you know, is thing, are, are we, is things better today than they were 20 years ago, or is it worse? Is it more difficult uh, to live in Hawaii today? For me, I believe that it's actually gotten worse. You can just look out on the streets and mm -hmm. look at the people's in the faces. People are working two to three jobs yeah. just to survive. You know, and they call this paradise, yeah? Mm -hmm. and they're working two to three jobs. Well, they're working two to three jobs to survive. We have foreigners invested in Hawaii. And we have a big foreign investment coming from Asia. Mm -hmm. And probably the largest comes from Asia, if I'm not mistaken. But the point being is they're building their portfolios on the backs of the people. Yes. The people are working their hearts out to survive while the foreign investment is coming in and buying everything up building their portfolios on our backs. Mm -hmm. And that's not fair. Yeah, it's tough. Th that's it's, not it's, fair. It's we really need tough. to start yeah. thinking about the people first and stop thinking about all this investment. I agree that uh -huh. we need to grow. Every city needs to grow. And I think Honolulu just went the wrong way. We should be a shining jewel in the Pacific. Yeah, mm -hmm. We should be an example to the world on how people of all cultures live and work together and everybody's happy. But right now, we have a problem in Honolulu where people are just saying, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. They look at someone that's homeless. That's not my problem. I, how they got like that. Well, the disparity know? seems to be getting wider between the wealthy and, uh, and, and the haves and the have-nots. It uh, doesn't seem like we're sort of that, that sort of middle income class of people seems to be either going up or down, and mostly it seems to be going down. It seems people that the seem middle income down. doesn't yeah. even exist anymore. You're yeah. either rich or you're poor. Yeah. So it's have or have not. And our kids, the ones that are getting educated in our school systems, right? Mm -hmm. Especially the ones graduating from um, UH and all that, they're not staying here anymore. Mm -hmm. They're actually leaving. And the reason for that is because they can afford to live on the mainland. 
Well, they the can jobs live, pay better. They have financial security right. there, right? The, jo the yeah. jobs pay better. Yes. The homes cost less, cost less, uh -huh. um, and to feed their families a lot less than Honolulu. Yes. Um, I was in um, Los Angeles City College about four years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Finishing up um, my um, degree. In, uh, I even totally forgot what I <laughs> degree, <laughs> degree in about paralegal in paralegal, uh -huh. and when I came back this way, it was amazing. The eggs were costing about five dollars for twelve. Yes. And when I could get it for eighty nine and ninety nine cents. Yeah. So we have a problem there. Why are we importing so much of our food? We import ninety percent of our food. Mm -hmm. I believe each island should produce their own foods for their own people. Well, we have the best soil in the world. We have great soil. In fact, uh, it's been argued that the soil in, in the Eva Plain area, you can you can rotate crops three times a year, so you can get uh, an extremely a, an extreme harvest or abundant harvest out of that land and, um, and, and we're not uh, and of course a lot of that land is um, you know there's a lot of competition over that land and it's not for agricultural use it's for for development purposes well it was agricultural but yes. now they change it for development which is wrong and we need to find a way to get back into the court system and reverse that because that is prime agricultural so, but, land. But, you know, we, we do live in paradise, right? I mean, everybody wants to live in Hawaii. Not everybody can. Not everybody can. Right? Everybody wants to. Great weather, great beaches, great, you know, the ocean's fantastic. It's beautiful. Um, is it realistic to expect that um, it's going to get easier uh, with, with the demand? Because prices are driven by demand. Right, and, and, and I understand that. Yeah. But do we continue to push our people, the local people of Hawaii, mm -hmm. outside of Hawaii, so that we can get foreigners to come in and so that they can live here, or so that they can rent the homes that they have as vacation homes uh -huh. and make money off of our backs? Mm -hmm. Or should we take care of the people? Why can't we have it both ways? That's a good question. That's I mean, why question. can't we start taking... And I think what happened is people started to get greedy. And that's, that's just my point of view. Mm -hmm. I believe that everyone, if you want to make money, go out and make money. Make mm -hmm. all the money you can. But remember, there are other people out there. And I think we forgot the true meaning of aloha, which is to live as part of the aina. We are yes. part of the land. Yes. The land is part of us. That tree is part of us. We are part of that. And we forgot how to live that way. And so now it's, we've become so westernized yes. that everything is about money, 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 and me, me, me. Uh -huh. We, don't, we no longer think about other people. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, the rail, because I know the rail is, is controversial. Um, some people think, well, okay, look at it. It's a big expense. It's a huge expenditure. Others look at it as a long-term strategic investment in that we'll be able to build housing and provide services along the rail routes and uh, build more workforce housing that people can afford to, to buy. Um, so there's pros and cons. Um, what, are your th what are your thoughts? Where do you think we should be with the rail today? Well, um, I actually think that the way they did the rail was totally wrong. I still believe that the rail should have been started from the inner city yes. and went out this way. And then you said they want to build up, then they would build up um, home um, housing and everything, and the rail would go around those houses, um, those mm -hmm. apartment complexes and all that and pick up people and take them to other places. We should have made an economic zone of housings from Kaimaki to the Waipau, beginning of Waipau area, mm -hmm. and kept the rest outside as country for the time being, and built in from within Honolulu proper to the urban parts, and built up that way, and the rail should have gone that way. The rail should that have that actually makes a lot of sense. The rail should have never gone from a suburb into the city. Mm -hmm. Who builds a rail that way? On Honolulu right, does, right. apparently. Why do you suppose we did it that way? Um, that one I can't figure out. I've been busting my head on that. Uh -huh. Why would you build a rail from a suburb into the major city? You don't find any other city around the road doing that. They actually uh -huh. built it from within the city going out. I understand they wanted to help the west side, right, with traffic mm -hmm. and all that. Well, with all this money, we could have rebuilt our infrastructures. That's what we should have been doing by building, rebuilding our infrastructures. We should have found another way around the Wainai Maka area mm -hmm. to get the people out. But we weren't thinking about that. We were thinking about putting a rail and putting a rail up. Why would you put a rail up? And I've heard people say, well, they wanted tourists to have a different view of Hawaii. Well, who are you building the rail for? Are mm -hmm. you building the rail for the people? Or are you building the rail for the tourists? Yeah. So let's get real. Who is this rail being built for? 
Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because you, if you talk about building for the tourists, wouldn't we have built it from the airport to Waikiki? That, that's, that would have been the route that you should have gone, yes. from the airport to Waikiki. And this way, actually, a lot of people would have got a chance to ride the rail, and they would have got comfortable with the rail. Because a lot of people in Hawaii are not comfortable with the rail. They're comfortable with their cars, yes. and I get that. We are a little spoiled, aren't we? We are yes. spoiled on our <laughs> car. I mean, when you have two to three cars <laughs> per person uh -huh. in Honolulu, yes. That in itself is a problem. Yeah, yeah. Especially parking wise. Yeah, now parking these days, we've been finding a place to park your car. How many times do we find ourselves driving around looking for a place to park our, our vehicle? A whole, a, whole, a whole lot of times. <laughs> I've had friends come into Honolulu and uh -huh. they tell me, I've never seen a city that has so much parking lots going up. Yes. And uh -huh. it does. We, and we still do. can't find and a place to park. park. <laughs> but look at Ala Moana, for example. Yes, yeah. And that's chaotic down there. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So um, when you decided to, to run for mayor and thinking about these issues, um, what are you hearing from folks? I know Red Hill's been in, in, in sort of a, an, an area of consternation as well. Red Hill is something that actually does bug me. Um, I was a child and I was brought up on Red Hill. None of those um, homes that are there, Kaiser and all those military homes, uh -huh. were not there. Just home, one place where I grew up with my brother to age six uh-huh and then from there we moved into the housing at that time i didn't know but when i got older my dad told me about what was on the red hill that there were tank fuel tanks under there mm -hmm. i had no mm -hmm. idea there's approximately 20 tanks right right now there's 18 of them Is it, in that, isn't that supposed to be classified information that was supposed <laughs> to be classified but i believe it opened up um just before uh -huh. 1998 around that time they unclassified that um they unclassified that and oh, so okay but the thing is, the water department, um, Department of Water, opened their mouth, which they should have, and said that there was contamination going on, there were leaks. So come to find out, every single fuel tank there has leaked. And I believe tank number five leaked about 12.5 billion gallons of um, liquid. Okay. Now these sit 100 feet above our aquifer. This aquifer is a drinking water to 600,000 people in the city and county of Honolulu. So it sits, plus it, tourists. it sits, now I, I thought the aquifer primarily was, came from the mountains. The aquifer, the, this, um, these tanks actually sit 100 feet above that aquifer. Mm. And so they're leaking and there's been contamination and the Navy has admitted it. Now wasn't, so there a, wasn't there a super, now back, back in the, was the 80s or, or the 90s, there was a super fund established uh, to clean up uh, contaminated soil. Was there any effort? Do you know if there was any effort made to clean up this, no, uh, the I'm, issue at that time? I'm actually looking into that one right now, so I haven't found that out. All I do know is that the Navy was posed two questions. Okay, clean well, it up uh -huh. or get rid of it. Ah. So the Navy came back and said they can't fix it. They can't fix it. Well, we're so, going to take a commercial break. And we're going to stop there. We're going to come right back and let's talk a little bit more about this. I'm Chris Leatham. This is The Economy You here at Think Tech Hawaii, and we'll be right back. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Kaui Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. I also have a blog of the same name at kauilucas.com where you can see all of my past shows. Join me this Friday and every Friday at 3 p.m. Aloha. Welcome to ThinkTechHawaii.com. This is Johnson Choi, your host. The topic is Asia in Review. We do it on a monthly basis on Thursday at 11 o'clock. Be sure to check the schedule. See you. Hi, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. I'd love you to join us every week, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. for Ehana Kako. Let's work together. We report every week on the good things going on in our state as well as the better things that can go on in the future. We have guests covering everything from the economy, the government, and society. See you Mondays on Ehana Kako at 2 o'clock p.m. Until then, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. And we're back again. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham. This is The Economy and You. And today's guest is Ernest Cavario. He's running for mayor. Uh, Ernest, we just uh, were talking uh, about the, the issues with, with um, the pollution, uh, potential pollution problems with Red Hill uh, when we left. And do we have a solution to the problem of contamination there? I mean, we can monitor it. You can monitor it. Um, the thing is, um, when gas stations 
put in their fuel storage tanks, right. they are held by strict standards by the EPA, mm -hmm. where the Navy is not held by the same standards. Right. And there's 20 tanks there. Two of them are unoperable because Tank 5 closed on after that major leak, uh -huh. and I forgot the other one that closed on. So there's only 18 that are still operable, but they're all leaking at one point or another. Mm -hmm. The problem is these leaks are going into the underground, into our aquifers. And like I said, these does the Navy acknowledge that? Does the Navy the, acknowledge the, the this The Navy's issue? already acknowledged that, but uh -huh. nobody, um, the state comes up with the saying that it's not the problem because it's Navy problem, because it's on Navy land, right? Right. And the city basically says the same thing. But mm -hmm. the bottom line, I believe that this is a city problem because that drinking water affects the um, citizens of the city and county of Honolulu. Mm -hmm. So as long as it's affecting the city and county of Honolulu, then I believe it is the mayor's jurisdiction to make sure that this is taken care of. Bottom line, those tanks need to go. They were built uh -huh. in 1940 and completed in 1943. Uh -huh. These tanks are over 70 years old. They weren't made to last it long, that long. They're going to end up contaminating that whole area and the drinking water, and sooner or later we'll have a bigger problem than Flint, Michigan. Well, that's, uh, that's a scary thought. That's a scary thought. Um, so, um, at the end of the day, do we just need to tell the Navy, no thank you, uh, take out your tanks and fill up the hole, or do we have them rebuild the tanks to a new standard, or what's probably the, what is, what is the route that, that we think we can get everybody on board with that? Well, I think that in this day and age, uh -huh. that we actually do not need these tanks there. But they're there as a part of our military <laughs> strategic defense initiative. For, built for back in the 1940s, Right. we are thinking. They don't need that. There's other ways of refueling today. They do not need those tanks there. They that, don't that, need that, that fuel there. That is unnecessary. No, not, 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 in, today's, not in today's time. Back in the 1940s, they had an argument Right. We buy that, okay? okay. Uh -huh. But not, not today. Okay. So they've today been, we need they've, to... Yeah, they've actually been told um, if they can double line these tanks and all that. Right. But this is, no, they can't do any of this. So if you can't do this and you can't fix it, then get rid of it. Bottom line. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to cause a major disaster here in Honolulu with this drinking water. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And that's something... Well, we, that and I'm we've had issues for. with drinking water, too, with, from pesticides and such. Right, and th th that brings us to the GMOs, Monsanto, and all that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I'm totally against GMOs and Monsanto. I mean, it's... The pesticides are killing our children. Well, they're, children they're also seem to be affected. affecting the coral as well. And the coral reefs are... Yes. It's, it's now, there could all. be multiple issues, but it just doesn't seem like it would be healthy for yeah. the... These pesticides, yeah, the these, these pesticides are killing and taking the health away from our children. They're spraying these pesticides right next to the schools. Now, that's, to me, unconscionable. And as you say, the reefs... So, mm -hmm. where do... How much further must we go on this? How much further do we allow these companies to go on and use in Hawaii as an experiment? Because this is what it seems that uh -huh. Hawaii has become an experiment for all GMOs and pesticides. Is there, um, yeah, and, and now, um, are we doing any of that in Honolulu? Are the, we're not growing any GMO crops in the Honolulu or on the island of uh, but Oahu. We still have a lot of pesticides. Yeah? Yes, yeah, we do. We have pesticides in a lot of areas, and you can uh -huh. go on a map, you can find out close to these pesticides are being sprayed to the schools, which is still. That's, Unconscionable. That's, yeah. That seems like a problem. Yeah. 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 And I, I, as, as far as Honolulu goes, I think Honolulu needs to take a stand with the other counties and back the other counties up on Monsanto and GMO and, okay. show, and show the other counties that we're with them. Well, sounds like you feel pretty adamant about this. Oh, that, on that I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's talk about one of the other issues that seems to be a never ending topic. Um, it's been a problem that's been around for you know, over 25 years, which is homelessness. Um, you know, what can we do to resolve, you know, and, and Senator Chen Oakland men mentioned uh, on the show here once that uh, half of our homeless are senior citizens. Where do you think we can, where the city and county is responsible for this issue and what can we be doing to, to actually have a long-term strategic solution to this problem? Yeah, actually, I think that the city is fighting this on the wrong avenues. Um, everything is about the short term. Nothing is about long term as you're saying mm -hmm. so I think they're finding this like it's one problem mm -hmm. but it's not a one single problem yeah homelessness is several different problems well you know one of the issues yeah. I, I look at is that we have a lot of federally funded uh, low-income housing in Hawaii lots of it but 
once people get in, they never have to leave. They never leave. Of course. And so far, you don't have any you more. You don't have any flow, flow, so the people, you know, they get on their feet, they're in a good, predict good situation, they don't, they don't have to leave, or they start working under the table, and you have an underground economy, and of course, then that means that people who really need it can't Can get it. it. Um, that to <coughs> we have to change the mindset of people and how they think. Okay, this well, idea, I got cheap housing though. I got yeah, cheap housing, but, but this I don't want to leave. <laughs> this and, and I understand that, and I hear people say it all the time. Uh -huh. But is it fair to a person that's working to continue to have to help subsidize that? Right, but uh, it's not. but there's a mindset of well, I got mine because and that's yeah. why we have to educate the people. I mean, because I see generations. Um, I grew up in the housing project, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. But I see generations of other people. Growing up in the gener in, in the housing projects, right. continuously after uh, one and that's after not necessarily the other. good either, is it? No. Because it cre creates a mindset no. of it's of of what I would say entitlement. Yeah, you know, and, and it's it's a wrong set of entitlement. I see it all the time. Well, mm -hmm. I'm owed this. I'm owed that. No one's owed anything in this life. Mm -hmm. We all should be working for what we have. And we should all be working hard, and we should be proud of that. Um, I believe that the way the welfare was ever set up, the way the Roosevelt them set up, was mm -hmm. never meant to be generational no more generational. Mm -hmm. You get in, we help you. We'll also help we'll help you as much as possible. Yes. But you're gonna have to make that effort to go to work, get a good paying job, learn how to um, budget yourselves, mm -hmm. and then we'll help you to move out of that situation to get your own place. Yes. Yes. So that other people that need that help can come on in. Yeah, it would just seem to me that it um, the the idea of having um, low income housing is to sort of give people um, you know, a hand up, not necessarily a hand out. Right, right. We're not, and I don't believe we should be giving anyone a hand out. I'm willing to go ahead and look down at someone eye to eye, put my hand uh -huh. down there, grab him up, and bring him up to help him out. Right. But to give away free things because someone's um, homeless, not, it's not the right way to do it. Mm -hmm. Because all we're going to be doing is enabling them. I don't mm -hmm. want to enable anybody. We need to bring them up. We need to change their mindsets. Can we do that, though? I mean, is that, is that doable? Yeah, can we, we do that? I believe we can do that. First thing we need to do is take the homeless families and take them straight off of the streets and take an area like Kailai Loa. Convert all those abandoned um, barracks into one and two bedroom apartments. Put now, them we've in been there. doing some of that, though, haven't we? A little, but not enough. Put mm -hmm. them in there, right? Uh huh. Charge them um, if they're working, yeah. So we charge them about two hundred dollars mm -hmm, a month mm -hmm. to help them. Then at the same time, we also educate them. That whole area needs to be set up as an agricultural um, homeless area. We area we can do this, mm -hmm. putting them in there and helping them to move forward. We right. also take the ones that's going to be the hardest, but yeah. the addicts. Yeah, the addicts are tough. Yeah. And the reason for that is an addict. It's not ready to move forward into an addict says I've had enough and I'm done. Yeah, I have a. I, I have to tell you, I have a, 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 a close friend of mine. His brother's been here, and his brother his brother is somebody who has a, a drinking problem, and I've just watched him sort of slide down steadily over the last three years here in Hawaii to the point now he's out here standing on the street corner with a sign. He hasn't. The situation for him hasn't gotten better. It's actually gotten worse. And every time he gets into some sort of a housing situation, he does something to screw it up and get, he gets kicked out. So uh, he doesn't know how to behave himself. That's because yes. I believe the way they were trained from when they were kids. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of this peop a lot of people out here, right, mm -hmm. they have this mindset that um, nothing's going to ever change for yeah, them. Yeah. And if nothing's going to change, why am I going to change to try to do better? Yeah. So I'm going to get a job making minimum wage that's I can't right. afford it. They don't, they don't feel so, like they're getting ahead. So yeah. why yeah. am I going to get a job at minimum mm -hmm. wage when welfare is going to pay me more? And then that, that's, that's right. That's welfare. right. Yeah, yeah. See, so there needs to be minimum wage. There needs to be responsibility that comes with uh, that entitlement. Yeah. There, there needs to be responsibility. Well, I, I really want to thank you for being on the show. We're almost out of time. So if people wanted to support your camp, your candidacy for mayor, how can they reach out to you? How can they contact you? They can go to www.ernest. Caravallo.com. Can you spell that for us? Yeah, www.ernestcaravallo.com. Uh -huh. v is in Victor, A L H O dot com. Dot com? Okay. Yes. And is there a phone number or? Yeah, um, uh -huh. if you want to contact me personally, they can go ahead and call at 808 
uh, one more time, 808. 808-371-3840. 3844-3840. Well, I'm Chris Letham. Thank you, Ernest, for coming on Think well, Tech thank Hawaii. Thank you for having me. Over. Yes, I'm Chris Letham, and this was The Economy and You, and we'll see you again next week, Wednesday, right here on uh, Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha.